All right, let's look at um, the explanation here for um, exercise one for the door um, programming. Um, in this exercise, you want to um, make sure that there's that you fit all this criteria um, that they're listing here. And um, we'll start by just creating a two-rung program to energize the door up and down. So let's create, an, um, and remember, this just swaps from instruction set to uh, downloading and running. Um, so let's go ahead and add two instruction sets on rung 0 and rung 1 and two outputs. And let's go ahead and label these. These are going to be the open um, push button and I've, t I've already gone and edited my symbols so um, you notice that the open normally um, open switch normally open um, symbol comes up once I put my input in and that's for the open switch for the close switch drag and drop this address onto this instruction set um, do the same for the motor up output in rung one and motor down for rung two um, so this is my rung for opening the door right now and this is the rung for closing the door and if we just uh, go ahead and download and run we notice this uh, automatically has a problem wow uh, but if we start with the door closed and open up we're fine door closed so it's energizing and if you notice the conditions of each um, input energizing the output open is true closed is true what we haven't taken into account and we kind of saw that already is if I go all the way up I'm going to stall the motor I'm going to over um, overshoot the open and if I close it all the way down same is true I'm going to slam it shut stall the motor overheat it um, so let's go back to programming mode and put a couple of instructions in here to prevent that using the limit switches. Let's um, let's look at our uh, limit switches here. The um, upper limit switch is going to be treated differently than the lower limit switch. And that's just because of the application. Even though they're identical switches, they are normally open. If you roll over them, it actually says normally open, activated, true, when door is fully closed, else not activated, or false. That's a little confusing. It's a lot of information there. But what that's saying is that this is a normally open switch. It's closed right now, and it would, if we were in run mode, this would show up as green, showing it was activated. And the only time it's activated is when this is fully closed. The upper limit switch is the same exact device. It's a normally open, um, but is um, not activated or is false when doors uh, fully open. The rest of the time, this, this limit switch is um, activated. The door is always in place in activating this until it fully opens and no longer activates it. So in application, it's the opposite of this guy. This guy is almost um, never activated until it's fully closed. This guy is always activated until it's fully open. So for that reason, we're going to use two different instruction sets. In rung one, we don't want to over travel so we don't want to open this up beyond fully open so we're going to put an instruction set here is examine if closed um, for the open limit switch so let's bring an open limit switch address over here so this is open limit switch and what this is saying is that I can open up as long as this guy is examine if closed um, and it is closed um, when it's anything but open this switch is closed if it's anything but fully open the door fully open um, and that sounds a little confusing but think about it again this guy is always activated as long as it's even an inch down all the way to being fully closed this one's the opposite we're going to grab an examine if open and drag our instruction or address from it and this is a closed limit switch. Remember, the limit switches physically are the same, but the way we're going to handle them is, is completely different. This is an examine if open. Um, if it's open, we'll allow this to um, close button to energize the motor down. Um, so let's go ahead and try this guy. 
with where we're at now. Um, click into run. I click open. So um, I'm in run mode now, and we notice that this statement is true um, on the open limit switch because it's activated. This limit switch is not true because it is activated, but it's looking to be not um, a closed. So it's it's um, a closed. It's it's normally open, so it's closed right now, which is energizing the input on the PLC module. Well, this guy doesn't want to look at that. He wants to see he's true if it's not energized, true if open. So he's he's going and looking for a zero, but there's a one in that input table right now. Um, so I crack the door open just a little bit, and all of a sudden that condition is, is satisfied. Now both conditions are satisfied. I can go up or down until I go all the way open and deactivate this limit switch. And it says um, examine if closed to allow it to open again. Well, it isn't is no longer closed. This statement's false. So I can hit open. And even though I've got a true statement here on my open switch, I won't energize because the open limit switch is open and it needs to be closed to be true here. So we've now prevented over travel and we're no longer burning up our motor by um, stalling the motor. Next on the list is this statement right here. Under no circumstances would both motor windings be energized at the same time. How do we prevent that? Well, we do that by using um, a couple more um, instruction sets. And those are examine if open statements. So let's go back and swap this panel. Um, and this is true if it's open. And I put these here and here in our open rung and our close rung. And for it to open, we have to say that it is not energizing the motor down. So I'm going to take this motor down, I guess I better grab it here, motor down address and put it here. So I, what I'm saying is my motor down has not been energized. Um, and the true, same is true of this. I'm not going to close this switch and allow the motor to go down if I'm energizing the up. So now I've used my imp, my outputs as the logic for my instruction sets, um, but I've used the motor down to make sure it's not energized or not um, closed. I should say, um, I'm not going to have a one on the input table for the motor down, um, which would prevent this from running the same time as I'm, um, I'm trying to energize the motor up, if that makes sense. Let me restate that. So this is a um, examine if open, which says it's true as long as I'm not energizing this output. So I'm true as long as I'm not energizing this output. This rung is true, as you notice it is right now. This instruction set is true as well because I'm not powering my motor up. Um, this right here would prevent us, even though we can't do it in this is a simulation, it will prevent us from pro pressing both switches simultaneously. It won't prevent us from doing it, but we could do it, but it's not going to energize both the motor up winding and the motor down winding. Um, next is to um, actually give an indication that the door is fully up or fully down. And we can do that with our limit switches, although, again, they're different. Um, the way that the limit switches are activated, um, this one is not activated when it's fully up. This one is activated when it's fully down. So we're going to put in two extra rungs here. And let's make this one the indicator for the door being closed. Um, so let's put a um, examine if closed instruction set here. Um, and then we'll put the um, shut lamp. Oops, better put an output there first. Put the shut lamp in our output. So now, not only is this um, limit switch allowing us to open, but it's going to actually indicate that we, uh, you know, it, it's it's the same limit switch that's allowing this motor to open um, and preventing it from keeping um, or allowing us to run the motor down 
and stall the motor. But now it's going to um, actually give us an indication um, of uh, by energizing this shut lamp. Um, so let's put the uh, let's put the closed um, limit switch address up here. Close limit switch. Now we're going to use the um, open limit switch to energize the um, open um, lamp. Um, this is going to be the opposite though. Again, this is going to be when I'm open, when this limit switch is open, um, is when I actually want to indicate that this open lamp should be energized. That should make sense, right? Normally, or almost all the time, this guy's activated because the door isn't open. When it fully opens, it's no longer activated, which would satisfy this condition here. Um, let's put this limit switch address in here. And now let's try running this guy. Switch over here, download. And you notice just when we start to um, uh, put it in run mode, our shut lamp comes on because we're actually um, uh, true in this statement here, and that's the only thing that is needed to energize this shut lamp. Um, we're closed, activating this limit switch, and um, energizing the shut lamp. If we open just a bit here, we've no longer um, closed this switch, it's open, and that doesn't satisfy this condition anymore. Open limit switch is still not um, true either, though, until we go fully open. And then this is true. This is no longer activated. It's looking for that condition to be true and activating the open lamp. That's uh, the door exercise one explained. Um, your, next ex your next assignment will be um, door exercise two.